We're very happy to have uh, Juliane Ritt from uh, Springer here. She's um, executive vice uh, president of uh, Springer and she's responsible for the open access programs, uh, particularly for um, Springer Open and, and Biomed Central. And um, she's gonna tell us what uh, Katrina already had announced, namely an initiative of a, of a publisher um, that is um, establishing an alternative business model in the field. So, please, Juliana. Thank you for the uh, nice introduction. Uh, I am very happy to be here uh, today. And uh, yeah, my, uh, as it was mentioned, uh, my responsibility, it has actually uh, uh, just recently changed. I have uh, now been focusing and uh, um, I have been um, and, uh, um, appointed to the executive vice president for hybrid open access uh, business models. So I'm very much focusing on accelerating uh, these business models. And so I think it is uh, very good for me and I'm very glad uh, to be here today to talk about uh, uh, our new pilot that we uh, uh, launched in the beginning of the year, which we call uh, Springer Compact, uh, which is, uh, I think, quite revolutionary, and uh, I will go into detail in a second. But before I do that, I would like to give you a little bit of a background why we actually uh, do this and uh, the motivation a little bit, the background of Springer and then jump right into the basics uh, of uh, our new um, pilot business model. Yeah, why uh, Springer? I think most of you are aware, but I would like just to pinpoint um, in the very beginning uh, our uh, trend setting role in open access. Uh, we uh, were the first uh, to um, launch in 2004 uh, the possibility to publish open access within the subscription journals. We call this the open choice model. I know the hybrid journals are, of course, uh, a lot under criticism by uh, many people, but uh, back then it was the first step that we offered authors to publish open access in these journals. And uh, as you all aware, um, many, most of the publishers uh, followed this uh, later on. Then uh, we uh, acquired Biomed Central, making us the largest open access publisher um, around. And that, of course, showed very much that we took uh, open access very seriously and were focused very much on uh, yeah, um, believing on the business model of open access and focused on advancing it. And uh, yeah, we are still uh, the, since then the leading open access publisher, and I will just show some data here in terms of articles. And in 2015, um, we uh, took another look at our open choice uh, uh, program or on our hybrid program and launched the pilots, which we call the pilot, which we call um, Springer Compact, a very new way uh, looking at uh, the offsetting deals uh, that um, yeah are under discussion at the moment, and this will be the center of my talk. And uh, of course, as you're all uh, aware, in the middle of the year, we merged, uh, uh, we being Springer, we merged uh, with um, uh, uh, parts of Macmillan, becoming the new Springer Nature Company, and uh, I can of course say that open access within this new company is also one of the strongest pillars in the strategy moving forward. So I think we'll see uh, much more um, from that end in the very, very near future. But uh, let's uh, zoom a little bit back into uh, the Springer world because uh, that is uh, where my experience comes from and what the focus of the talk is. Just a little bit looking at the number of articles, and this is pure open access uh, journals now, where do we stand um, with Springer uh, in the universe? Uh, as I said, we are the leader here, and uh, these are <coughs> pure open access uh, articles in pure open access journals. And uh, as you can see, uh, Springer, of course, thanks to uh, Biomed Central, um, takes a leading role here. And uh, yeah, we have uh, over 40,000 articles published last year in our pure open access uh, portfolio, taking um, yeah, quite a significant part um, of the market share, namely 24%. 
Um, and I do not want to comment too much uh, on the other uh, publishers that you see here. What I would like to focus on is uh, just the pure, uh, the fast growth rate. I think you're all aware of of uh, overall uh, the growth of uh, 20%, 28% in terms of articles uh, from 2013 to 2014. This is pure open access, but of course, open access, when you look at the overall universe, only takes a small part in uh, when we talk about published articles at this point. And uh, this is uh, now uh, uh, a report or articles that are drawn from uh, journals that are listed in the journal citation report, so it is obviously not a complete picture, but uh, a significant picture, and what you can see here, still, of course, a high percentage, 87% of the articles uh, are uh, published in uh, journals that are subscription-based, and uh, only 13% in the pure open access arena. And uh, out of the subscription journals, uh, we think uh, as a 2% uh, were uh, open access journals. And this, I put this up there because this is what I'm focusing on. Our uh, new business model really focuses on the hybrid journals and focuses on accelerating the open access percentage um, of articles in our hybrid um, journals. Um, because I was asked, and just one one snapshot, maybe very briefly, of our overall policies uh, to begin with. Um, in principle, as I've mentioned, we have, of course, fully open access journals, mainly with the Biomed Central and with Springer Open journals and also some books. And uh, yeah, here uh, we follow the CC BY license, and when it comes to books, it's the CC BY and C license. And uh, the same license is also uh, followed with our open access articles in our hybrid uh, journals. And uh, Springer publishes over 2,000 journals, and 1,600 of these journals uh, offer uh, open access options. Why not everything? This is because of some journals are not owned by Springer. We have corporations with other uh, uh, publishers, and we also have corporations with societies, uh, and uh, there we do not, uh, at this point, cannot offer open access everywhere, but the ones that we own, and also some of them where we have uh, joint uh, uh, deals, we offer open access. 1,600, so quite a large number um, of uh, journals. Yeah, and uh, yeah, archiving rights, I don't need to go into this into detail. The focus is on the 1,600 hybrid journals um, that uh, Springer is um, publishing. And um, now I would like to jump directly into the uh, Springer Compact offer. The Springer Compact offer uh, yeah, was put into place uh, because we uh, at Springer would very much like to accelerate and support the transition uh, from a subscription model to a gold open access model. Uh, we see the benefits here for the author, global reach, etc. the benefits of open access. So it is meant as a transition model. It is not meant as a model that is here to stay. It is a transition model, and we feel that uh, Springer Compact could support and accelerate this transition. On the same uh, token, we also feel and know, of course, that a lot of it is still published in closed, as in subscription format, and therefore it was also extremely important for us to ensure that uh, researchers, readers, etc., continue to have access and are able to read uh, the uh, content that is published in subscription journals um, uh, as they used to do um, when they belong to a certain institution. So that was also uh, very, very um, important when we looked at the business model. And then I think one of the most important, equally important thing is that we have um, strong interest to uh, focus on the development of workflows and tools that really make that whole process easy and uh, yeah, slimmer, uh, and therefore uh, yeah, uh, also affordable uh, moving forward. So it should be sustainable. Uh, we should create a workflow that 
enables to um, um, implement that um, um, yeah, business model on a large scale. And uh, yeah, it should, of course, also be uh, affordable for our partners. Why Springer? Yeah, I mentioned on the one hand, we feel that we are a trendsetter in business models, so we are, are motivated uh, by uh, just that fact. Um, and uh, we have, of course, as a large publisher, and I think I mentioned that here specifically, and you will see these numbers later, um, a, re a very, very good relationship to many authors, and especially also to many authors in all different kinds of fields because of our large portfolio. And, uh, th th there is, of course, um, often large publishers uh, like Springer being criticized because of the largeness, but I think only because we have such a large portfolio and we reach out to so many authors, this um, offer is attractive and uh, is made possible. And uh, another reason why we think uh, we are the ones who, who could um, bring this to the table is because yeah, we have experience building workflows. We have an IT department that supports as a production department. So we feel that we could uh, here uh, help to create an infrastructure uh, that works at a large scale. And then, of course, we have uh, very, very good relationships with you on the, uh, uh, on the librarian side and are used to run pilots and work together to um, um, develop new ideas uh, jointly and uh, uh, ideas that look into the future. So few words uh, to our take on the authors. <clears throat> I mentioned uh, the authors a couple of times and of course authors don't really think about which publisher they want to publish in, they mainly think about which journal they want to publish in. So the reputation of the journal and the choice of the journal is of key importance uh, to authors, as most of you, I think, are very much aware. Open access actually uh, does not play such a big role, and uh, uh, this is uh, responses that we have received from our authors um, when we do our regular um, author feedback rounds and questionnaires. It's a, a quite a large um, an, uh, pool of responses and uh, yeah, quite representative. But the more and more, of course, mandates come into play, um, the more of importance the open access will also play. But the choice of the journal plays a big role. And when you then look next uh, to the journal quality itself, I think one of the key factors is, of course, the speed of publication that has to do with author services. So um, a key point here. And uh, one last point uh, in terms of giving the author the choice to publish. Because we have uh, so many uh, journals you can publish in, over 2,000, I think Springer um, is, is a good uh, publisher to offer this Springer Compact. And as I mentioned, 1,600 of those offer um, open access. And um, Next, uh, uh, to the choice of journal, then, yeah, the experience, uh, the positive experience an author um, has with us is, of course, also a good basis um, for moving forward. And that I bring up this slide just to stress the importance of the uh, ease of the process. That is, I think, a key success fac factor, not only in, um, in, in this uh, arena, of course, uh, this is a key success for, uh, factor for all publishing. Um, but here, uh, I think with open access, um, there is uh, still uh, some um, uh, legwork to do in order to make that uh, uh, process of being finding the funder, making the uh, the payment um, <coughs> workflow smooth and uh, yeah easy and understandable for all parties involved. So I think that is um, uh, very important, and uh, yeah, uh, we are quite happy uh, with um, our responses from our authors because most of them, as you can see here again. Uh, um, yeah, a feedback um, that loop that we uh, receive from our authors, most of our authors um, work uh, quite well with Springer and we get positive feedback. So uh, just, uh, I stress this so much because our new concept basis is based very much on the publishing side of it. And um, 
Now I would like to immediately jump into what Springer Compact is about. It is a holistic approach. It is an approach which really, on the one hand, combines the publishing element with the licensing or with the access element, but it really takes the uh, belief that open access will play a much bigger role in the future. It is, in a way, uh, the future of publishing. Therefore, this business model is built from the, op from the point of view of open access. So the publishing part, and that should also be kind of visually carried in this slide, is the bigger part of it. It is the the key element of the new business model. We come from publishing the articles open access. Plus, of course, the access to the subscription articles, also uh, articles that have been published uh, in the past, obviously is also extremely important and is a key element of it. But it is only part of it. And you cannot really separate the publishing part and the access part, but you can put the publishing part, let's say, in the business model first, and that is basically um, what uh, we did. We also took uh, under consideration that in that new uh, world, in that new business model, we are talking about more partners than in the uh, regular licensing agreements where key partners was, of course, the publisher with the librarian, the publisher with the consortium, but now next to the author also funders play a big role or the <coughs> research institutes within a uh, university play a big role with their research funding capabilities. So it largens the stakeholders uh, that uh, play a role to make this business model a success. So what are the principles of uh, this uh, business model. First, uh, the business model uh, takes <coughs> the current spending um, of our partner under consideration. It is not based on the past in that respect, but it takes the current spending levels under consideration because that is a reality obviously, because um, countries or consortia have uh, financial realities to work with. So we take this under consideration. We also believe that uh, the transition to gold open access uh, brings with it the necessity to maybe shift budgets and bring also partners uh, that contribute to the publishing and to the accessing budget-wise together. So um, the, uh, next to the traditional library budget, the tr traditional budgets of consortia, uh, funders' budgets, institutional budgets, research grant budget need to be uh, considered. Um, another principle of a Springer Compact is the fact that we believe open access is growing but not only open access is growing, but in principle the article output uh, worldwide is still growing. So it needs to be a sustainable, if it wants to be a sustainable business model, it needs to take that growth under uh, consideration and into account. And uh, yeah, what I mentioned before, uh, in a way it, it steht in Feld, I would say, in uh, my, Austrian pronunciation of German, um, uh, it um, basically depends greatly on good workflows. Because if the workflows are not there, if it's not simple to use, if it is not being implemented, imp uh, possible to be implemented on large scale, it also will not work. And uh, these were the principles. What is the conclusions of this? We built on the future of, um, of publishing, or we built on the growth of publishing, therefore we put the publishing into the center, and um, therefore uh, we also do not discount the cost of the publishing. The cost of the publishing per article at, uh, in our hybrid journals is a universal price of 2,200. This is a basis, and this uh, number is not discounted. 
But uh, having this said, there is much great value, of course, in Springer Compact because the publishing costs are to a very, very, very high degree um, offset to the existing, existing license fee. So you get uh, basically, uh, you pay for the publishing at the price of 2,200, but you can offset uh, these uh, costs uh, to extremely high percent uh, um, to uh, the current licensing fee. And of course, as I mentioned before, uh, Springer Compact grants access to the complete uh, Springer Link database. And how does this now uh, look like? It's actually very uh, simple in that respect. You have a publishing fee that pays for all peer reviewed, all types of peer reviewed articles in the hybrid um, journal collection of Springer. So uh, these are, of course, original articles, uh, review articles, etc. And then an additional fee um, allows the access to the complete Springer Link database. But this additional fee is, of course, uh, not uh, as much, much smaller than the original license fee, because that is basically the publishing costs are nearly 100% offset with the licensing fee. So you get much more value uh, within Springer Compact because you can publish the articles and you can access the licensing with some additional costs, which are necessary because of the transition to um, open access. And this is the Springer Compact fee. And yeah, what does uh, the Springer Compact fee basically uh, allow you? I mean, the, it is on the one hand the publishing fee. Uh, that covers all aspects of publishing that uh, an author is used to, uh, from the peer review to the production to the dissemination. And of course, very, very important here, uh, the ease of the workflow when it comes to all the questions in terms of um, um, open access, the payment process, which in that case for the author is of course a no payment because it is funded uh, by an institution. And uh, all author services along the way that we are offering, offering in the publishing process. And then you have the access fee or the, the additional fee that allows the access to the um, Springer Link uh, portfolio. This is basically covers everything that you're used uh, to uh, under the uh, license fee. So it is uh, access, it is archival rights, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, counter reporting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is basically, in a nutshell, the basis of um, Springer Compact. And uh, we have started uh, two uh, pilots. We have already in the works um, uh, our um, Springer Compact arrangements with the Netherlands. And uh, we will soon uh, start our uh, ar arrangement uh, here in the UK. It will kick off with a pre-pilot in the f uh, fourth quarter of uh, this year, and the uh, official start is then uh, 2016. And uh, yeah, why these two partners uh, at, at this point, and we are discussing also uh, with two other partners, at the moment, actually three other partners in the moment, because uh, yeah, there is a shared vision uh, on the table. Uh, there is uh, the readiness uh, to, uh, to team up uh, with other funders if this is necessary. Uh, and uh, there is also the ready readiness and the willingness to invest time in creating these smooth workflows, because even though we have we are already uh, quite some uh, way along creating a workflow, but we are not there yet. And it is uh, necessary to create the workflows, the interfaces, and the reporting together with our partners. And that, of course, takes uh, yeah, some time. And um, yeah, this is what we have um, found here with um, the partners we pilot with. The author benefits, I think, of Spring Up Compact are very easy uh, because if authors publish in under this scenario, um, yeah, they benefit from open access um, benefits. Uh, I don't need to name them. Uh, they also don't need to worry about any of the uh, uh, regulations or the mandates uh, that 
are relevant to them because that is of course covered um, in the deal. And uh, yeah, uh, the automatic, uh, <coughs> excuse me, depositing of the articles in the repositories, etc. So these are the normal, regular open access benefits that are there uh, for the authors. In uh, our deals, of course, uh, the big advantage is that with one day to another, uh, 1,600 journals are there uh, to be published in and in all different kinds of disciplines. I think the benefits for uh, you, for the librarians, for the consortia is, uh, yeah, uh, when we have it all implemented, it eases the administrative burden, which um, of course currently is very, very high. So that is um, one uh, key aspect. Uh, it is much more value. Uh, that is uh, very, very obvious uh, because uh, of what I explained before. It is uh, with some additional costs, it allows the publishing open access plus the access to the complete um, database. Yeah, and obviously it, um, yeah, it goes along with all the mandates. And uh, there are, of course, quite a few challenges also um, attached to it. And uh, the challenges that are attached to it have to do with the process, mainly with uh, the process of the verification and the identification of the author, because uh, yeah, it is key that uh, we are sure that uh, the authors that publish are the corresponding authors that publish in our journals really stem from uh, the institution so, um, in, um, that are part of our partnership. So that is clearly a challenge. Another challenge is um, in the end of the process uh, creating reports uh, that um, allow uh, to uh, include all the information necessary uh, for evaluating uh, the process. This is a less large challenge. The first one is certainly the larger uh, challenge in setting up the deals, uh, but nevertheless, it needs to be done. Um, and yeah, uh, to a certain degree also depositing the articles uh, in the right repositories, but uh, I would also judge this as not as challenging as the first part. And uh, I've mentioned so often uh, the workflow. I think it is the heart of the success that it really works and the identification of the author um, is, um, is very key and the verification process is very, very key. And we are working on to map that out. And then of course uh, the uh, payment circle and the accounting circle, very, very, very uh, important here to uh, make that happen. So what have been the key challenges uh, so far? And this is actually easily put on one slide. The key challenges of uh, the pilots that um, we are working in has a lot to do with the data because uh, it is a completely new system. It is built on publishing, but you need somehow, a, on the one hand, a visionary approach, well, how much will you actually publish in the future? That is one thing, and you can base that estimation of the pub how much articles you publish in the future, of course, on uh, some data that you have from the past, but, on the, uh, but if <laughs> our data on the, uh, what has been published by which institution in the past with Springer journals would be extremely easy to extract, uh, life would be easier. It is a challenge. We really need to uh, uh, get better on that aspect, data quality, because institutes are called all different kinds of ways, obviously, so to make sure that uh, we have caught them all in order to get a good basis uh, for the data. Um, also article types, yeah, um, is it always, is an article uh, in the past always correctly um, um, uh, categorized in our metadata? We are not so bad at Springer, but are we perfect? No. So this is really a, a big, big challenge. Another challenge is linking of the budgets that I've mentioned before and yeah, the workflow itself. So this is basically the experiences so far in the, in the cooperation and the pilots. And uh, yeah, this is basically what I wanted to explain to you. Um, and 
This is Springer Compact in a nutshell, and uh, thank you uh, very much for paying attention. And now, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I'm sure there are questions. There is the microphone. So again, me, sorry. Um, one question I have is probably a rather simple one. The other one is a bit more complicated, so I start with a simple one, and that is, I know that Springer supports the use of ORCID. That's certainly helpful to identify authors. And I was wondering whether it would make sense on the publisher's side that also institutions had a persistent identifier. I know it's certainly complicated to populate this among our authors because they sometimes forget where they work, but... <laughs> We had somebody filling in clinic hospital as an affiliation. And, yeah, as and, the, and the second question is a bit more complicated. In order to have an offsetting model really transparent and understandable, it also means that, and at least in my naive understanding, that libraries need to be aware what others also pay. That means, would it be helpful if an offsetting model would also get rid of non-disclosure agreements in payments on subscri subscription fees, at least from my side it would make sense, but for Springer is this something that... I think that second one is, uh, would be quite difficult for us, I have to say. Um, the first one, uh, with ORCID and institutional idea, so first of all, yeah, we support ORCID of course very, very much and use that as much as, as we can. And we also like, uh, you know, funders, et cetera, who mandate ORCID because it makes our life easier and the identification. So this is uh, part of it. Uh, we could also, in that context, um, and we are developing now uh, these uh, dashboards or this uh, uh, communication with the institutes. Uh, we could also, in addition to, uh, uh, to the other information, uh, use an institutional ID um, uh, to uh, to help the verification process, and, and we have been talking about this, and uh, you know we, we, we consider this. The uh, only uh, question is, nevertheless, is the issue when an author changes the institute, and the research, let's say, mainly comes from the institute he is now not part anymore. And that is basically, he doesn't have the institutional ID, anyway, I mean, this is, has nothing to do with institutional ID, but that doesn't solve the problem because he doesn't have the institutional ID anymore. But in principle, the research article, you know, was done within the previous uh, uh, institute and we need to, um, yeah, take this under consideration in the, in the workflow that the present Institute is not 100% necessarily the one uh, that um, basically contributes then to, to, to that publication. Yeah. Please. <coughs> one more question. Hi, Anna Clements, University of St Andrews. Um, so, as I won the award for the Chris Systems, what I'd like to ask you is. Um, what we, we would be interested in is exploring with publishers and their manuscript submission um, software providers about defining a common set of metadata for manuscript <coughs> submission from institutional CRIS systems because we're collecting that metadata, authority metadata, and earlier, earlier in the publication process. So is that something that you would be interested in talking to us about? And I'm uh, happy, I think we need to do that, of course, offline, but absolutely, maybe we can connect. It's then maybe not myself who would talk to you, but um, uh, colleagues in the, uh, in the department for metadata and submission, absolutely. All right, we... There was, I think, one... Uh, there, were, there are several more okay. questions, but we are running out of time and... I think um, maybe you will be available. 
after or during lunch for, for more questions. And I'm, I'm very sure that we will hear yeah. much more about the compact model, which is uh, definitely a very interesting and new idea. And I would like to thank you very much again. Thank you.